Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank you, Apostolos, for the invitation and the, on behalf of Lloyd's Register and the opportunity that we have to present all these, all these items that we already discussed, EDI, EOI, SEMP, we can see as management tools and we can see the, and we can discuss and present the synergies with the new ISO 50001 standard, which is, which is the energy management system. Very briefly, and I'm not going because during the session, the first session, we had a lot of discussions and uh, uh, update information on, on last uh, uh, IMO meeting in London last week. So uh, I'm going to give you a very brief um, update on energy efficiency regulatory framework, the SEMP, but the managerial part and the managerial approach of the SEMP, the introduction of the main requirements of ISO 50001, the energy management system, and not, I'm not intend to go into detail, and uh, at the end, the benefits from a certified ISO 50001 system. Again, very known things, as we already discussed, First study, 2000, regarding greenhouse gases, <coughs> guidelines on energy efficiency on EOI 2005, other studies 2009. In 2009, we have 681, 682 EDI calculation verification, 683, SEMP, EOI 684. <coughs> Market-based measures, Apostle just say, just present a number of market-based uh, measures and uh, that approach. And, as we know, the EDI and the SEMP is are mandatory 1st of January 2013. EOI remains vo on a voluntary basis. If we, say, if we have in the center the IMO initiatives, we can see uh, the EDI through the shipyard, the SEMP, the EOI, and the market-based measurements at early stages or still we have uh, all these are under discussion. In this year, 2012, it's expected the new version of, 2000, uh, or a new version of TMSA, especially for the, um, from O'Keefe, for the uh, oil tankers. TMSA 3, what will be the new, a new chapter, probably, chapter 13, as we have this information up to now, focus on fuel efficiency and fuel management. In simple words, energy management requirements. I'm going back a few years back, five years maybe. You may remember, you may recall ISO 40,000. It was a requirement for uh, ISO 40,000. It was a requirement for ISO 40,000. It was the, the requirement was stage four requirement of TMSA. Yes, stage four. The requirement was to have an environmental system in place. We expected to have something similar to that new version. So especially for that uh, industry, I'm talking about, about the oil tankers. Uh, it is expected that the main driver and this customer's customer's requirement will be for the, uh, from this uh, new edition of TMSA 3. Generally speaking, what is an energy management system? And you can see that there is a, a, uh, a, an N between the E and M in order to be able to have this description uh, between the EMS, environmental management system, and energy management system, is a set of interrelated and interacting elements to establish an energy policy, an energy objective, processes and procedures which it interacts to achieve in order to achieve those objectives. The continual uh, improvement is there. We heard during the first session that uh, it follows, of course, the known to all of us, the plan, do, check, act as we used to say, the, the Deming cycle. In simple words, developing, uh, developing a policy for a more efficient use of energy, targets and objectives, data, we need data, to generate data in order to be able to, to measure them, to review, and then to therefore continually improving the energy management. Now, regarding the same, just an overview, 
what is the same, we know that this an energy management system is an energy management system. It's a manual, if you want, with the main characteristics of the plan, do, check, act uh, approach. Same based on the regulation, SEMP, uh, SEMP needs to be developed for each, uh, for each ship, should be ship specific as per regulation. Main future are those given but to, the, to the appropriate IMO guidelines. The main elements of the SEMP will include these energy efficiency measures and, uh, and the definition of their implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. As we know, 1st of January, mandatory. <coughs> if we use this and what we, what we do, we analyze and we try to set these requirements of the same as described to the IMO regulation uh, within the Plan Do Check Act cycle. You can say I'm not going to any further details, but during the, the planning stage is the plan, implementation 3.8, 3.9 is implementation, the part do of the cycle, the check 310, 313, and act at the final stage is the self-evaluation and improvement, and of course, a voluntary reporting review. I put that slide in order to, and please keep it in your uh, in your mind in order to see the link between the ISO 50001 in a few minutes. So we can see that there is a, a, a straight uh, approach as a management system uh, of a management system uh, regarding the same. Uh, we, we, just, we just say that based on the SMS, the ISM as we know, the safety management system, SEMP May be, part, may be part of, linked maybe to another ISO 40001, uh, the environmental management uh, system, uh, could be part of the, of the SMS, should be a chapter of the SMS, could be make an, a reference to the SMS. It's up to you, I think, to decide the most efficient way. I don't know if you have any other approach to that one. It remains to be seen. And, Moving, moving on to the ISO 50001, as I said, it's, a, it's the new ISO uh, 50001 standard focused, uh, focused on energy management only. Uh, uh, version 2011, for, um, for your info, I would say the, the previous one, it was the BS uh, 60,000. Uh, the overall aim of the standard is to enable organizations establish the systems and processes necessary to improve energy performance, including energy efficiency, use, and consumption. Of course, it tends to apply to all size, uh, size, sizes and types of organization and can be used independently or integrated. And I think the integration for us, for our industry, based on the ISM and other management systems uh, already applied to our industry, is the key of success of such a standard. Only the structure, only the content uh, of the ISO 50001, scope, references, term and definitions, and of course, chapter four is the main requirements of the standard. There is uh, two annexes, Annex A, which is provide the guidance on the use of international standard, and Annex B, the standard as itself, is providing the correlation, or if you want the correspondence, between the ISO 50001, ISO 9001 quality management, ISO 40000 environmental management, and ISO 22000 food, food management. But let's leave it outside for now, for this time. So, <coughs> where is the line? Establishing, implementing, maintaining, improving a management system to enable a systematic approach for a continual improvement uh, regarding the energy performance, specifies requirements applicable to energy use and consumption. We have no specification regarding performance criteria. And for, uh, for use by any, anyone to demonstrate conformance to its stated energy policy. Now, the same cycle, again, the plan, do, check, act cycle is the main requirements of the standard. Again, I'm not, I'm not intending to go to details uh, of its chapter, sub -chat, uh, sub chapter of, the, of this standard, but you can see exactly 
the same approach as we have and as we already uh, presented with the SEMP. Exactly the same approach. A lot of common areas, a lot of uh, common requirements regarding the SEMP and ISO 50000. And the link, because now we're putting one more link, the ISO 50001, we're talking about what we used to say, uh, used to call this kind of system as uh, integrated management systems. The base should be the ISM, the SMS, the SEMP, the ISO 40000, and on top of that, the ISO 50001. Most of the requirements of the ISO 50001 should be covered, or if you want, could be covered by the existing SEMP. What is the rationale for an energy management system, uh, system standard? First of all, develop the baseline of energy use. We cannot improve anything if, we're not able, if we are not able to measure. We need to establish the baseline. Actively managing EU energy use and costs. Redu uh, reduce emissions without ne a negative effect on operations. And of course, when, when we're talking about operations here, we're talking about for the onboard operations. Companies who have a voluntary adopted an energy management plan have achieved major energy intensity improvements. I would say that uh, I have the same feedback as Apostolos uh, presented to us on MERSC uh, uh, um, BP and Hajin, I think. Uh, uh, and uh, it is expected as we have the first two companies worldwide uh, certified against this ISO 50001 standard, it is expected that uh, within, within the next six months we have um, data regarding um, to show us the, uh, the achievement of energy intensity improvements. And I'm talking about two Greek companies, shipping companies. Um, what is the practical approach? Our practical approach, I'm, I'm giving only a few bullet points here. Uh, our practical abort, uh, approach on board the vessels, navigation and voyage planning, we should focus on, on board the vessel, on navigation and voyage planning, fuel management, trim optimization, speed management, ballast exchange, hull propulsion, main energy performance, auxiliary machinery performance, electric power generation, and auxiliary engines performance. Uh, you just say a few things about this one. This is only some of the requirements, if you want, of course, um, provided to the guidance, the best practices on the SEMP, but this is what we expect uh, aboard, the, aboard the vessel to see and to verify as the practical approach regarding ISO 50001. Now, in order to conclude, uh, the benefits of an ISO 50001 certified system, <coughs> cost cuts, cost cut through increased efficiency, thereby delivering competitive advantage. Increased stakeholder co uh, confidence, for example, charters. Competitive advantage by implementing industry, uh, industry best, practice, best practices on KIMF. I just, I just say about the new version of TMSA3 that is expected within, uh, during 2012. Promote energy management best uh, practices and reinforce good energy management behaviors. Productivity and compliance improved. Assist facilities in evaluating and prioritizing the implementation of new energy efficient technologies. Policies formalized. And of course, easy for integration with other management systems, uh, existing management system for a shipping company. ISO 9000, 40,000, environmental, SEMP, and of course the ISM. And in order to Close my presentation. Ed Pinero, which, which was the, the chairman of the ISO committee, to for two regarding responsible for ISO 50,000, he said that the energy efficiency is the forgotten source. We speak of oil, gas, coal, nuclear, renewable, renewables as source of energy, but we forget that the most we forget that the most efficient use of energy is not to use it at all. So that was the statement of the chairman of ISO committee on. ISO 50001. Thank you very much.